morning everybody. Welcome to Now Church on this lovely Sunday morning. If you're in our Lango building, it's time to stop your socially distanced chatter and find your socially distanced seat. I'm getting used to what you're all like now. Keep missing these first few minutes whilst you find your seats. If you're at home watching today, I hope you've got yourself somewhere comfy to chill and watch from. I hope you've got a mug of tea at the ready and we're in for a great morning this morning. So welcome to church. It's so great to have you with us today. I think we're all really aware at the moment, aren't we, of how different life kind of looks, how many restrictions we're having to get used to and different changes and how different church even looks and, and feels. But um, I've just really been focused this week on thinking about Jesus, how he doesn't change, how the Bible teaches us he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And that means that wherever you're watching church from today, whatever it looks like in life for you today, that the same God that you once knew is the same God who wants to speak into your heart and life today. The same God you used to encounter perhaps on a Sunday morning in a gathered environment is the same God who is present in your home this morning if you invite him into your heart and into your life. The same God who made promises to you is the very same God who wants to be your promise keeper today. Listen to these verses from Hebrews chapter 13. It says, be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you and consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Let's pray as we go into our time of worship. Father God, we invite you today into our hearts and into our lives, into our homes, into our minds. Speak to us today, God, as we open our hearts to you. As we worship you, God, we pray that you take the place of all honour and all glory in our lives. We just thank you, Jesus, that you are the same, that you are unchanging, that you're steadfast, that you're faithful, that you're good and that your promises are true, that your word endures forever. And so we look to you with all faith and hope and trust and confidence this morning and we worship you. We thank you for who you are. Amen.
now and as ever following the covid regulations we won't be passing around the bucket at our lango building but you can give online in a number of ways or by back so those details will come up on the screen for you now let me share with you again that verse from hebrews that we've looked at today it says this hebrews 13 verse 5 keep your lives free from the love of money be content with what you have because god has said never will i leave you never will i forsake you i love the idea that when we give from our finances we give from a place of trust from a place of dependence on god when we recognize that everything we have actually belongs to him and he is all we need we can be free from the love of money and content with what we have because we know he'll never leave us he'll never forsake us there's so much exciting stuff happening with your giving at the moment we've got building projects on the go in our Langold building, creating a better space for our youth and kids. And the next step will be um, the reinstallation of a kitchen area in the building as well. Uh, your giving also supports people overseas who are living in poverty, as well as works that we do in our community and the building of the church. So we'd love you to give freely and give generously, knowing that God will bless you and that you can trust him for all that you need. So thank you for your giving this morning. If you're in year seven plus, part of Now Youth, or maybe you've never tried youth before, we'd love to see you at the Half Term Social, which is taking place on the 18th of October. It's gonna be a movie night. It's two pound entry, which includes your snacks and drinks. And Amber will be heading that up along with the team. So if you wanna invite a friend along, that would be awesome. You need to book your place online as always, and it'd be great to see you there. Hey, good morning and welcome to Now Church. It is great just to be able to take a little bit of time and to be able to share with you uh, something from God's Word. If you are new to Now Church, if you're joining us for the first time this morning, either in person or online, it is so good to be able to welcome you. Uh, my name is Marcus. I'm one of the pastors here at Now Church and it is a privilege just to be able to continue our preaching series at the moment about choices we all have loads of choices that we have to make we all have small choices that we make and we all have big choices that we have to make as well and i think uh, this season this coronavirus season has been a time which has both kind of made us make uh, choices for the short term but it's also been a real evaluation period in our lives where we've had to do things differently we've been forced to do things differently and so maybe uh, many of you are looking towards your future and saying well actually how do I not just go back to doing what I was doing but do I want to do life a little bit different and you're making choices and our prayer and our hope is that if you are following God that you are really engaging him in those choices that you are uh, people that want to be in the will of God you know we we, we call ourselves followers of Christ and that's an active thing. We want to follow Christ. We want to do what he does. We want to go where he goes uh, and, and we, want to, we want to be committed and passionate people for the things of God. Uh, and so we hope that you're really engaging God in the choices that you are making and saying, God, I want to do what you want me to do. Uh, and so we've been looking at different choices that we have to make in our lives 
the choice to start, uh, maybe the choice to stop, the choice to stay or the choice to go. And then last week we started looking at some of the characteristics that are always there when we are in the will of God. You know, so often we're like, God, what is your will for my life? And sometimes it seems like the will of God isn't that clear for us. Uh, there was a book written by, a while ago by Pastor Stephen Furtick in America, uh, and it was called God's Will is Whatever. Um, and actually, sometimes there's, there's, there's truth in that. You know, I think God is a big picture God and he's not that interested in the tiny details of your life. I don't think he cares about what shoes you wore this morning. Um, I don't think he cares if you get your hair dyed or not. Um, God's will is whatever, but there are certain things that are always there when we are in the will of God. Uh, and last week we looked at, at serving. Actually, when we are in the will of God, it will always lead us to serving him. God designed us to be servants. And as we follow Jesus's example of, of being a servant, we should be led to serve. We should be led to serve others. We should be led to serve God. We should be led to serve him his church uh, and this week we want to look at another thing that is always present when you are in the will of God it is something that God has designed you for I think it is in our nature uh, and it's something that we will do when we are in the will of God and so hopefully as we go through these things it will help you make some good choices you know maybe you're crying out saying God I want to know if it's in the will of God and last week we finished by saying and asking the question you know it, are the decisions that you're making right now are they going to help you serve more or help you serve less and that could have been your answer as to whether you were going to be walking into the will of God or not. And today we want to look at connecting about relationships because God has designed us to be in relationship with other people. God has not called us to be um, isolated. God has not called us to be loners. God has called us to be in relationships with other people. God has called us to be a body. God has called us to be a church. He wants us to be in relationships with others. He's not put us on our on earth as isolated creatures. He wants for you to be in relationship uh, with others. And some of us will find that very easy. Maybe you're an extrovert by nature uh, and actually being in relationships is easy. You can easily talk to people, but maybe those relationships seem a little bit shallow sometimes. And whilst you might have hundreds of friends uh, and your Facebook list, you know, tops thousands, there's few people that you would actually call close friends, people that you could actually turn to when issues uh, really hit you in the face. Maybe you're an introvert and actually you really struggle with making relationships. You really struggle um, talking to people and getting deep with people. But I want to tell every one of us that God has designed us to be in relationships. God has not called you to do life alone. And I think one of the biggest effects of lockdown has been isolation, people being isolated and is beginning to show already the effects of isolation. You know, CAMS are Young People's Mental Health Service. Their referrals are through the roof at the moment. They can't cope with the amount of referrals that they're getting um, because people have been isolated, because they've not had people to talk to. Suicides are already going up. And I think the health effects are, are starting to show when we don't live in relationships with others. And I think the spiritual effects of lockdown and of isolation are also starting to show because where uh, in the absence of God where we've not prioritized God where we've not been able to you know maybe make God number one in our lives actually other things will always creep into that place uh, and so I think there's very much a social aspect um, of lockdown that is beginning to affect our nation but also there can be a spiritual aspect of lockdown that is starting to affect us because when we don't put God in that number one position, when we don't say, God, have all of my life, when we don't prioritize God, something else will always creep into that spot and that will affect your walk with God. 
Now the good news is God is always looking out for us. We can never step outside of God's love. We can never walk too far away from him. But when we do walk away from him, when we don't prioritize him, of course that is gonna affect our relationship. But God is waiting for us. God is there with open arms this morning saying, come back uh, to me. I wanna welcome you uh, into my arms today. But we have to turn around and we have to walk back uh, to God. Um, today and so we want to look at relationships with God we want to look at relationships with others Uh, and hopefully as you make choices this week as you weigh up different decisions uh, as you look at your life uh, you will seek to be in relationships with others in healthy relationships because it is part of God's will for your life to be in relationships with others and so this morning I just want to look um, and ask five questions Uh, of us hopefully we'll get through all five uh, in the time but just ask some simple questions five questions that will hopefully help us uh, look at our lives look at our relationships as well and look at some different passages in the bible that kind of uh, unpack God's will for us I think one of the um, an amazing friendship in the bible is between Moses and Aaron Moses uh, the leader of the Israelites taking them out of slavery into promised land and his, and his brother Aaron and uh, and I love the fact you know Moses had weaknesses Moses had a stammer um, and he, he can always articulate what he wanted to say and so God sent Aaron his brother to be a voice uh, to to him and it says this in Exodus 4 um, verse 14 to 16 where Moses it says what about your brother Aaron the Levite I know he can speak well he is already on his way to meet you and his heart will be glad when he sees you you shall speak to him and put words in his help in his mouth and I will help you both I want to ask the question to us all this morning myself included who are you spending time with who are you spending time with look at your friendships maybe in your head Uh, think about where the majority of your time is spent who do you spend the majority of your time with who influences your life the most because with Moses you know God sent someone along that would be a help to him who would who would um, stand up where Moses was weak Actually, he would, he would be there to compliment Moses, uh, to spend time with him, but to help him. And he was someone that would build Moses up. And I want to say that God provides us with what we need sometimes with other people. It says in the Bible, iron sharpens iron. And I believe that we become what we surround ourselves with. Actually, the more time you spend with someone, you probably notice the more you can become like them. And when you, influ- when you get yourself in a place where you're influenced by the right people, that's fantastic. But sometimes we can be in a place where we're influenced by the wrong people because our surroundings have an influence on us. And the people that we surround ourselves with have an influence on us. Us. One of the favorite, one of my favorite things about coming back to Langold uh, and doing church with other people, not just online, is is the worship. Now, if you're at home, I can't speak for you all, but I, I, I have a pretty good guess uh, when when the worship comes on, the majority of you uh, probably don't stand up. You feel a little bit awkward in that time because it's a little bit different. But when you come to Langold, actually, it's completely different. Yeah, we can't sing out loud. We can't belt out those songs, maybe, that we used to, but we we stand up together. And I feel the presence of God uh, more in this place as I'm worshipping God with other people. And it's it does something to me, and I believe it's more honouring to God as well, because I fully commit to him. But when I'm by myself, I don't tend to do those things. When I'm by myself, I feel awkward. I'm like, well, what's going on? What do my neighbours think? What about the people walking past my house who see me standing up? But when I'm here, actually, and the influence of other people is there, actually, it feels normal. It feels right. Uh, And people influence us and we can become like other people. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Who are you becoming like? Maybe ask yourself this morning, uh, what do you really want from your life? What are you living for this morning? Are you living for self or 
are you living for God? Am I living for self or am I living for God? And then once you determine, once you know what you're living for, invest in the right relationships to get you there. Maybe the relationships that you're in right now, actually, yeah, there's, there's some good people in your life, but are they influencing you? Are you influencing them? Who do you spend the majority of your time with? Are they people that are building you up, helping you? Are they the people that God wants you to spend your time with? Are you here today trying and you know that actually your life is just trying to keep up with the Joneses? Actually, you're you're trying to be like someone else because you're comparing yourself to them. But is that the person that God made you to be? I want to say young people, there's so much pressure on you uh, to, to be like your friends, to conform to the way that the world is. But that is not the message of the Bible. Actually, God wants to transform us. And there may be modes of pressures on you to do certain things, to act a certain way. But right now, actually, not just a question for the young people, but for us all. Who do you want to be? Where do you want your life to be? Where do you want your life to be now? Where do you want your life to be in five years time, in 10 years time? Hey, where do you want your eternity to be? When we die, when we leave this earth, what do you want your life to look like then? And maybe part of the answer to getting you to that place is the people that you surround yourself with, the people that you're in relationship with. Who do you want in your life when actually things get really hard, when the rubber hits the road, when you lose your job, when your finances are really tough and bankruptcies on the card, when one of your parents dies, when you go to the doctor and you're diagnosed with cancer? Is there someone that you just want to reach out to, to call? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Do you have someone there? Who are you spending your time with? Are they a good influence on you? Is iron sharpening iron in those relationships? Or are you actually slowly being blunted with those relationships? Are they actually taking you away from what God has for your life? So who are you spending time with? Also, I want to ask, are you positioning yourself for good relationships? Are you putting yourself in a position for good relationships? One of the most famous friendships in the Bible is probably between uh, David and Jonathan. And David had a, a very complex life, uh, to put it simply. You know, there, there were hard issues in his life. And, and, you know, we know that Jonathan's father, Saul, was m at many times trying to track down David and kill him and so this this is such an unusual friendship and we read this in 1 Samuel 23 it says uh, while David was at Horash in the desert of Zip he le learned that Saul had come out to take his life and Saul's son Jonathan went to David at Horash and helped him find strength in God I love that how his friend came to him and helped him find strength in God. But David had to put himself in a position to receive that friendship. He had to make himself available and open to that. He could have looked at Jonathan and said, you know what, I want nothing to do with you because of who your father is. Don't you know your father's the one trying to kill me? But David put himself in a position for good relationships. Uh, before lockdown, um, I used to do park run and I know quite a few people in this church and maybe uh, people watching today, you know, you, you enjoy park run. It's a, it's a 5k run on a Saturday morning uh, where hundreds of people and our local one is at Clumber Park would gather there, run 5k um, together or, you know, and I would say it's good times, it's fun and it, it is, but 
in the middle of winter, it's quite hard to motivate yourself to get out uh, when it's cold outside, when it's wet outside, when it's, when it's still dark outside, when you'd much rather just be under those covers on a Saturday morning. It can be hard to get out. And I know the truth is on many a Saturday mornings, if it wasn't for Park Run, if it wasn't for the other people that were going to be there, there is no way I would have got up and ran 5k and actually as uh, as proven by the fact that lockdown has you know meant park run isn't running and my saturday mornings are no longer spent running uh, round clumber park because sometimes we have to position in our, ourselves in a place where actually we will make good decisions we will have uh, other people speaking into our lives and we position ourselves in the right place we make time for other people to speak into us and i know life is busy we we tell ourselves life is busy um maybe you know it's a bit of a pride issue actually we can go oh, if i'm busy then i'm more important but actually sometimes we've got to make time actually all the time we've got to make time for relationships it's for building good relationships to put ourselves in a position where actually we have healthy relationships because that is God's will for your life to have other people in your life he's not designed you to be by yourself what does your diary say about your relationships do you make time for other people or not do people fit you into their diaries or do they make room for you in their diaries um, and I think sometimes you know we we think that asking for help putting ourselves in a position where we can ask for help is a sign of weakness but actually it's a sign of strength because we all go through times where we need other people to help us through are we positioning ourselves to become more isolated or are we positioning ourselves uh, for good healthy relationships even Jesus had relationships around him. Just before Jesus went to the cross, he, you know, he must have been feeling the, the anxiety and the worry of dying on a cross, of that horrible torture that was about uh, to, to come on him. And we read and we see in the Bible how Jesus called his, his friends, his disciples, the people he was closest to him. Uh, and in amongst this worry, he said, listen, friends, I want you to pray for me. I want you to stay up all night and pray for me. Even Jesus knew that he needed other people in his life. And if Jesus needed it, how much more do we need good people to stand with us, to support us, to help us in hard times? We need it. So are you positioning yourself for good relationships? I want to ask us this morning, are we going after the usual suspects in our friendships as well? Or will the day we cross maybe some of those, those normal kind of boundaries that we have and open ourselves up to maybe some different relationships? There's a really short book in the Bible uh, called Philemon and it's Paul and he's writing uh, to Philemon about this slave, this slave um, Onesimus who had run away from Philemon and he had found Saul, Paul and actually they had become really good friends. Um, uh, actually he's, Paul says, he says, you've become my very heart and so he's writing to his other friend Philemon and he's saying I know your slave has run away from you and I'm sending him back to you because what he did was wrong but will you now treat him as a brother? And actually, there's some pretty unusual friendships going on in that situation. And sometimes we only ever look for friendships kind of in the people that are like us, the people that think like us, the people maybe who are the same as us. But actually, there's some great rich friendships that can be found outside of that. Friendship isn't just being the same as someone else. When we moved back to this area uh, a year and a half ago, or well, just under a year and a half ago, um, you know, someone reached out to me and it was the minister of the United Reformed Church at the time. Uh, uh, and, you know, we love God's church, but our church now, church, it's a Pentecostal church, you know, sometimes described as a happy clappy church. Um, 
uh, and the United Reformed Church, lots of respect for that, but it's quite different. Uh, and this man reached out to me, his name is Jeffrey, he's spoken at our church, and he said, hey, why don't we spend some time, why don't we pray together, why don't we read um, together? And now, if you look at us, we're quite different. Uh, we're different ages, uh, we might look different, we might have different backgrounds, uh, and we might believe different things about the church. And, you know, we come from different streams within God's church. But even in amongst that difference, there's a friendship that can be there, a real deep friendship. And sometimes we, we really limit ourselves when we just stick to the same people. And actually, God wants to open our eyes to all of his creation um, this morning. So are you going after the usual suspects or will you allow new people? Will you allow maybe someone very different to who you would usually uh, reach out to? Because maybe those are the people that God has lined up for you uh, today. So who are you spending your time with? Are you positioning yourself for good relationships? Are you going after the usual suspects? Now, are you doing what you want? Are you doing what you want? In, um, in the Bible, we, we find something called the golden rule. It's a rule that Jesus lays out for us and he says this, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law of the prophets. And actually, are you doing what you want? What you want in relationships with other people? What you want from other people are you doing? Because that is the way to get it. Actually, by doing what you want, whatever you want to get, you start to do and you start to give to other people. If you like the idea of having great friends, people who will help you, push you, um, be there for you, catch you when you fall. Give up their time for you. Are you willing to be that person for someone else? Are you doing what you want? Whatever you want, whatever you want, you should do. You should do for others. If you need friends, which we all do, we need to be people that are connected in. Are you doing that for other people? Are you being there for other people? Are you doing what you want? And I want to ask you again, one final question. Can we handle the truth? Because friendship isn't just people and relationship isn't just people who tell you what you want to hear. But actually it's people that will tell you the truth. And we see another friendship in the, in the Bible. Um, Mark, Paul and Barnabas and actually there's been a falling out between Paul and Barnabas over Mark. We don't know all of the details but in some way Mark must have messed up a little bit of his, of his life and Paul says actually I'm not, I'm not going on these journeys with him anymore. Um, he can stay behind and actually Paul and Barnabas fall out over this because Barnabas he knows that Mark's done something wrong but he still sees value in him, he still sees worth in him, he still sees potential in him and so Barnabas says listen if you're not going to travel with him I'll take him and we'll go on this journey and, and we don't really know much about the in-between story but we find out the end result where Paul in a letter is saying actually will you now send Mark to me because he is so helpful in what we are trying to achieve and so actually there's been a turnaround there because Barnabas saw something in Mark and actually Mark went on to write one of the gospels as well but maybe it needed Paul saying that bit of truth to Mark for him to sort his life out, for him to say, actually, yeah, I'm going to really passionately go after you, God. We all know people um, that will just work around different people to hear what they want to hear. Very much, um, well, pretty much all the time, you know, half an hour before tea of an evening, our children will come to me and say, Dad, can I have some chocolate? Can I have a snack? And I say, no girls, tea's in half an hour. And so they walk off. And do you know what they do? They walk to their mum. And they say, mum, can I have a snack? 
Can I have something to eat? Because when you don't get the answer that you want from one person, you can go to someone else and hopefully you get the answer that you want from them. And we can do that with friends as well. We can work our way around different people till we get the answer that we want, till we have someone that justifies our opinion or what, the actions that we want to take. But true friendship is, is telling the truth. It's challenging people. It's saying, come on, get yourself up, get yourself out and do what you're meant to do. But we need to be people that aren't just in friendships to hear what we want to hear. But actually people, we need to be people that are in friendships to hear what we need to hear. People that tell us the truth, people that say, listen, what, what are you doing? Come on, come on, sort yourself out. We run correction or you run away from correction. We help um, yourself become the best you by surrounding yourself in relationship. I love coming back to Langold. Now we've connected in different ways over lockdown. We've connected over Zoom and different methods and that's been fantastic. But I love being back at this, at a church on a Sunday morning, surrounding ourselves with other people. And you know what? Church will look different in the future. And even now church looks different as we watch it on a screen. But there are fundamentals that will always be there because God is calling us to relationships. God is calling us to be people that are connected and God wants us to be engaged in church. And maybe this morning this is a little bit of a challenge to us and there are lots of people that for very legitimate reasons cannot connect back into church yet and that's why we want to keep on doing things online. But church is God's plan. Now church is much bigger than a building. Church is much bigger than a Sunday morning. I, I know that. But I also know that church is the bride of Christ and it was his plan for this world. He destined the church and he wants us to be a people that are connected in together. He wants us to be a people that are gathered, a movement that moves, but people that gather together and then scatter again because it's good for us. It encourages us. It's so much easier to kind of do the life that we want to do when we live it in isolation. But it's so much easier to live the life that God wants us to live when we do it with other people. And church is for that. Church is for that. Here are people that want to be in relationship, want to have good connections, people that spur each other on, help each other. So I want to encourage people today. Is it time to return to a building? Is it time to gather back together physically with other people? Is it time to reintroduce some good connections into your life today? Hey, I want to mention one last friendship and it's the friendship that Jesus invites us all to. Again, it's a pretty unusual friendship a friendship between God and us. But God wants to call us friends. Jesus said to his disciples and he says to us, you know, I no longer call you servants for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I want to call you friends, people who know me. And today Jesus wants to be your friend. He wants to offer out that hand of friendship to be someone with you, to help you. Um, and today that opportunity is there for us. Now, in the past, we've ruined that friendship. We've made mistakes and we've let sin get in the way of that friendship with God. But today I want to give us the opportunity to come back to God and say, God, I want to, I want to remove those sins. I want you to remove those sins from me. And I want a relationship with you again. I want to be connected with you again. I want a friendship with you again. Will you help me? And hey, if that is you, I want to say a prayer and I'd love it if you could follow along uh, with me. And it's just really simple. God, I want to be your friend. God, I want to be in relationship with you. God, I want to be connected with you today. God, will you forgive me for when I've messed up that friendship? Forgive me when I put other things in between me and you. And God, will you help me live in a right relationship with you, chasing after you. God, will you send your Holy Spirit to help me be a good friend to you. I pray. Amen.
And if you've prayed that prayer, I want to say, fantastic, well done, it is great. We've got some resource that we would love to give to you. And if you've prayed that prayer, why don't you let someone know there's a button that you can press. If you're watching online, you can send us a, a message. If you're at Langold, you can talk uh, to one of the team. And we would love to be able to pray with you, stand with you, give you a little gift to help you as well. But thank you so much for joining with us this morning. It's been amazing to have you with us today. If you're here for the first time or you've tuned in for the first time, welcome. We'd love to get to know you more. So please do send us a message on social media or email hello at nowchurch.org.uk so someone can let you know who we are, what's going on. You can ask any questions that you might have. And um, we've got lots going on in the life of the church for children, young people, and for older people as well. So please do get in touch. Let us know that you are here and we'd love to reach out to you. We've got a free gift for everyone who's here for the first time as well that we can pop in the post for you. Hopefully we'll see you next week, same time, same place. If you want to join us at Langold, it'd be amazing to see you. Please just book your space online um, so we can keep to the regulated numbers. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your head. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Of God, cause all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Of God, I love your voice. You will let me through the fire, and in darkest night, you will close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived. In the goodness of God yeah. And all my life you have been faithful Whoa. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made Oh, I will sing i
the goodness of God. I'm gonna say.